It's been a minute. It's really nice to see you, bro. You too, man. Look at those beautiful bricks behind you. Look at the foundation of music that's stacked up behind you. Look at those cassettes. I'm so you, jealous. You, you, with that? Are you kidding? I've been online trying to find cassettes. You know how hard it is even to find? Well, yes, you do, because you have a collection. It's really yeah. challenging to find cassettes now. And it's something that about six or uh, six to nine months ago, I just was like, oh, I don't know. I really want that sound, that feeling. How long have you been collecting? Well, I just started again. It took me about three years to get what I got right now, because some tapes are just harder to, harder to find than others. You're a collector. You're preserving these things. Absolutely, because when I was a kid, um, I didn't have money to buy every tape I ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? So usually what we had to do was go to this place called Record Time, and I would take the tape that came out a couple of weeks ago, trade it in for the new tape, you know, whatever else was, was out. Me and my friends would take, we would, we would take turns buying the tape and be like, it's your turn to buy this <laughs> tape and I get to dub it. And then it'll be yeah. my turn to buy the yeah. next tape. You would dub some, and it'd be like, <laughs> the air would be like, <laughs> and you'd hear the air more than the tape. You'd have to turn it all the way up. Yeah. And then all you hear is the bass from it. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> What's the one that springs to mind when you were at that point in your life when you didn't have two pennies to rub together and you got that tape? What was the one that you were like, this is the one I've, I've been waiting for. This is the most exciting thing I've pressed play on ever. I mean, I can't even gauge that. I, I, I can't even gauge that because backing up to what I remember, like my earliest memories of, of hip hop would be for sure Ice-T, Reckless, and... Then I saw the movie Breaking. My Uncle Ronnie actually um, brought the tape over, the Breaking tape. And I didn't even, I don't even think I knew at the time, I was like 10 or 11. And I don't even think I knew at the time that there was even a movie called Breaking. So he put me up on a lot of sh And that was one of the first rap songs I remember hearing. And then I went and watched the movie and then I just, I was all in. This is my friend LL over here. Some, some of you know him as LL Cool oh, J. I, I know him as oh, Todd. yeah. What did he say on the poster? It said, two marshals, salute. You can do anything you put your mind to. That's, wow. That's LL Cool J quoting one of my lyrics to wow. me. Wow. That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Over here. There they are. Greatest group of all time, yeah, man. I think. I absolutely I absolutely agree. And you know, I was thinking about, I was listening in the gym yesterday to, to um, Tougher Than Leather. Mm. And the way their voices meshed, I don't, I, you'll never hear that again. I, wait, I'll give you another one. Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys yeah. was like the, right, the, the white run DMC. Their voices, all of their voices meshed together so well. Like I don't, but run DMC, bro, the way they would interchange and just go like, say one line, like I've never heard a group like that. And then Jam Master J would come in and somehow, even with the energy of DMC and Run, the DJ comes in and his scratches are as powerful and as exciting as they are on the mic. No one's ever scratched with that level of intensity and it's, it's just crazy. I'll never forget where I was when I saw the King of Rock video. I was at my Aunt Edna's house and I was, I was sleeping in the living room sometimes with the TV on. Mm -hmm. I remember I was about to go to sleep and I don't even know what channel I was watching. And that came on when they were walking up to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm like, what, did, what, what? Oh, that's Run DMC. I had never seen a video. I knew who Run DMC was, but I had never seen an actual video from them. I was probably, I don't know, 11 or 12 maybe. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Who, who the f was cooler than Run DMC? Nobody. Who was cooler? Nobody. The golden era of hip hop was the best era to me because... It was so new. You'd never heard it before. I saw and heard a lot of people say that it wasn't going to be anything. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't going to last or whatever. You know, here we are, what, 40, 50 years later? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy and it's the biggest music, if I'm not mistaken, it's the biggest genre. Arabian Rock Him for me, that moment when I Ain't No Joke came out, that moment for me was like, Oh, because it sounded so rough. It sounded like the mix was so disgusting. Yeah, man. Around that time, when Rakim first came out, I remember I was at my uh, grandma Nan's house, and 
I used to t- we all we really had here in Detroit was the Wizard, and the Wizard was on WJLB, and uh, the Wizard every night from like midnight till whatever time would play hip hop and it all be shit that I never heard. Kumo D, go see the doctor, like all kinds of shit. So what I would do is record the radio and then wake up the next day for school and listen to what I had. Mm. And the only bad thing about that was you'd hear one verse from somebody and then another verse would come in from a totally different song, which, you know, so a lot of times it'd be like, I know this first verse by heart, but I don't know the rest of the song by heart because, (laughs) you know, that's all I got. Rakim, though, the God MC, the God MC. One of the greatest things about Rakim to me was he would use words that you've you've heard you've heard a, this word rhyme before, but it would it almost be like like I don't just use an example. I know he didn't say this, but like if it was you know girl and world, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden Rakim, you'd expect him to rhyme that, and he's rhyming plural and rural. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was like different. Like he's like, okay, these words haven't really been rhymed yet. And he was the first, right. like, I take seven MCs, put them in a line, and add seven more brothers who think they can rhyme. Well, it'll take seven more before I go for mine. And that's 21 MCs eight up at the same time. Easy does it, do it easy. That's what I'm doing. No fessing, no messing around. Yo, the, the inside rhyme schemes, all that shit, man. Yeah. I feel like yeah. Microphone Fiend, though. I feel like when I heard Microphone, no, Microphone Fiend and Lyrics of Fury. When I heard Lyrics oh, of Fury, God, yeah. there's a line I want to find on Lyrics of Fury. It's only one capable, breaks the unbreakable, melodies unmakeable, pattern unescapable, a horn if you want, the style I possess, I bless the child, the earth, the gods, and bomb the rest. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I think Rakim probably is still great. I haven't heard anything he's working on lately, but I guarantee you he ain't lost that yeah, because it just yeah. that that kind of shit don't go away. That it just doesn't. Do you notice the lists when they come out sporadically? And it's great. It's great for fans to dive into that debate because it's it's energy and it's debate and it's good. Yeah. And you're always on the list. Do you read the list when when it gets goes viral and it's like, all right, top twenty rappers of all time, and then the whole thing sort of becomes it sucks the air out of the room. Do you do you do you sort of log on and check that stuff out when it's happening? Like I don't I don't know if I it's fair to say I I don't really get into those lists. Like I don't really like it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I know for, for a fact how I feel, I rap to be the best rapper, but I'm not the only rapper who raps to be the best rapper. Wayne, mm-hmm. Cole, Kendrick, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like Joyner Lucas, they, they rap to be the best rapper. And I feel like that's, you know, when you push yourself like that, that's what I feel like inspires greatness. Yeah. But the, but the list, man, it's sometimes you almost have to go by era. Well, let's talk about Nas for a second. Cause halftime's on the list. And that's a that's a, obviously for fans. That's on that's on Illmatic Five Mike Classic. Yeah, that that's a real fans cut as well. Like when the debut album came out, Halftime had been out. It was actually already in existence. People knew about it, but he included it on the final track listing, which is something because that track listing is what ten songs in thirty six minutes. It's so so reduced and so essential. Um, yeah. Why did you choose Halftime? And and as someone who kind of I guess grew up being a fan of Nas before you were a contemporary of Nas's. What is it about him that, that you loved as a fan before you got to know him as the artist? There's too many moments that he had for me to even be able to to count them. One of the reasons that I picked Halftime, though, is because there's some rhyme schemes on there that most rappers to this day probably can't do. And that's one of the things that has made Nas so great over his career. Like, like when he, uh, cause when I blast the herb, that's my word. I'll be slaying him fast, doing this, that, and the third, but chill past the entree and let's lay a back up at John Jay and hit a matinee. He was rhyming entire sentence. And I'm like, what the f- is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Illmatic, I can't even, I mean, you know, everybody knows that that is a, a classic essential album. Yeah. I don't know where you I don't know where you place that in hip hop, but it's got to be at the top. I think that I've been inspired by so many rappers. It taught me different flow patterns, different schemes you could do. And then when you start finding your own that you feel like haven't been done yet, mm. that's 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 when it becomes fun. By the way, Pete Davidson did a good job, man. Who's this? Too shady from Santa. That's crazy. A PS5? I didn't even ask for this. Eminem surprised fans when he popped up in this skit on Saturday Night Live. 
Dear Santa, I can't believe the year is almost over. It's getting colder. I'm a year older, but I'm still your soldier. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he flipped that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember they, they, they sent me the lyrics to it, and I was reading them on paper, and I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be that good. <laughs> and then the way when he said it, yeah. like, I was like, holy like he said it so good that he sold every single thing and you can't you can't first of all everybody's raps look terrible on paper right because you don't necessarily know unless you're a rapper yourself you don't necessarily know where even if you are you don't know where yeah. they're gonna hit the beat at what pocket yeah, they're yeah. gonna choose yeah and he was in an ill pocket like he he was like he was kind of going like and he'd go a little faster and then he kind of slow down like so you could catch what he just said. And he had your intensity as well. I love that you were looking at it through your fingers just like the rest of us were because it's like that song is, is it's become this iconic moment for you, but it's it's like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people love that song. And so when you're going to bring it into a comedy environment, it's such a powerful story. You're like, oh, no, Mr. Pete, no, what are you doing? But he kept your intensity. That's the thing. Yeah, he he his delivery was for sure really on point because it was uh it, it was not what I expected when I saw it. I was like, man, this is this is actually really good. The whole thing was great. Let me put something to you. That wall behind you, right? That's an exercise of manifestation. Like every one of those cassettes that you wanted to own, that you knew you already loved, but you didn't have the money to own them. That just continued to feed your ambition and your desire to to make your voice heard, right? To, to add value, to be a part of it, to be a part of it. And then you go through that list and you've met a lot of people on that wall. Now that we're in fan mode, and it's just you and me talking as fans of music, do you have moments where it just privately it just blows your mind? Like I know how proud you are of that LL Cool J poster. It just blows your mind that, that you've met so many people on that wall of tapes behind you that you were just a fan of, you know? Yeah, I mean, LL... Like I met him at a Foot Locker. What? Yeah, when I was doing my my shopping for the first for the album cover for the first album cover, the Slim Shady LP. Yeah. And he was just standing in there by himself, right? And he walks up to uh, this woman that uh, worked for Dre at the time, and they knew each other, so they were like, "Hey, what up?" And, and I'm I'm standing. I don't even know what. The, do you know what i'm saying like I, i'm like how do i not like how do i not play myself in front of one of my favorite rappers of all time how do i i gotta figure this out and he quoted one of my lyrics to i forgot what song it was oh he said how can i be how can how can i be white i don't even exist wow and i was like what the f so dre had played him that mm. but i just like it blew my mind like that was the actually I think Tretch is actually the first rapper that I ever met, like famous rapper in person. And he's one of your absolute favorites, right? Like he's like, I know he's in the top three for you. Oh, he's up there. Whatever. He's definitely, yeah. He, he, yeah, he has to be up there. Like he, he, he taught me so many things, like different flow patterns. He, he was so unorthodox with the flow and always had the punch lines. Mm. I heard the tape and flip. I, what do you say? I heard the tape and flip the next side, looking for the deaf side. You couldn't be all right if I erased your left side. Like he had the punchlines, <laughs> man. So, so I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas at this time, and hadn't like nothing was popping with me and Dre yet. We actually went out there because the Slim Shady EP. We had some, some uh, a dude who wanted to buy three thousand of them. So we were like, "What the? F Let's go out to Vegas." We end up in this flea market. There's people selling clothes like that. And there's a Naughty by Nature booth. And Tretch is standing there. Tretch, standing there selling his own sh I'm like, what the f So I, I walked up to him. I was nobody. You know what I'm saying? And asked him if I could get a picture. Told him what a fan I was. I bet you he probably don't even remember that. But I think I was in that yellow jumpsuit where I looked like a banana. <laughs> that Dre always... <laughs> that Dre always makes fun of, but I, it was a clothing company that was just starting out, and they knew I was just starting out, and they gave me an outfit. They gave me a sweatsuit. Man, well, I, I gotta watch those endorsements. Seven days. You gotta yeah, learn a valuable lesson that day. You gotta watch those endorsements. They'll get you. Yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, 
No, he was just so cool. Like, he was just so cool to me. And it just, I always remember that. Like, man, I wonder, I I can't even remember what I said to him because I was just super nervous and and just took the picture. But I don't know if I got a chance to tell him what a fan I was or am still. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't remember what I said to him, but probably was some dumb. Finish it with one more. Let's do one more. How about Apache? I don't know if you remember the song with uh, Lakem Shabazz. That's another underrated MC. Lakem Shabazz. Flavor unit. Yeah. So one, two, three. One mother, two, mother, three. Yeah. Apache was like, tell me, is this some type of tournament? I'll cut your head off and use it as a Christmas tree ornament. Come and give me your (laughs) test. Whoever claims to be the best, leaves with a 40 below footprint on the chest. Lakem. Shabazz, uh, Apache, and then Tretch comes in at the end and kills it, man. That's- Flavor Unit were the truth, man. They had so much talent in their ranks. At that moment in time, they ran the game. Latifah had just assembled this Voltron, this Avengers of rappers. It was crazy. Yeah, man. Latifah was one of the first, like, to me. Beast. A beast on the mic. Yeah, like, that would probably describe it. Back then, it was it was not that many females that rapped. Salt and Pepper was great. Roxanne Shante, MC Light. Roxanne Shante. I have that here. I probably have pretty much every tape you could think of. Oh, here's real Roxanne. Roxanne Shante. Here's another one. Yeah. Now, third base. Yes, please. Like, to me, this is one of the most classic albums in the history of hip hop. I saw an interview with MC Search recently, and somebody asked him about if 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 he thinks he influenced me and he was like nah no you know i like whatever like that's bull and that is bull because he did influence me very heavy this is full circle and because you won't remember this the first time we met you were on a uk promo tour for my name is just the song at the time no album you came in yeah. we had a conversation and i didn't really know anything about you at the time but i knew that i loved the song so all I had to go on was like your influences. There wasn't enough of a story that was being laid out for me. And we talked about third base and it was the only band that you really lit up when I talked about like, Oh, what about third base? And I was really nervous to bring it up because of the skin tone and like, Oh, no, he's yeah. going to be like, great. You're making another comparison to a white rap group. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks dude. Do your research. Yeah. But you lit up and you were, and you were super good about them. Then you were like, I love third base. That's crazy that we're finishing this conversation with that. Crazy. Yeah, man. They, uh, they, you know, MC Search, like I said, like, like I saw that interview and I was like, oh, come on, Search, you got to know you inspired me. You know what I'm saying? Because like Search and Pete Nice, man, I, I wish that they would have stayed together. I wish they, they would have made more albums. I wish there wasn't the tension between the two of them and it wasn't like mm. that, but I'm not the one to aim my call. So you don't have that problem, man. Yours is a solo, yeah. a solo mission. Hey. Have a safe holiday, man. It's been really nice to finish. This is my last interview of the year, so it's been really amazing to finish it on a high note like this and just be able to nerd out. And uh, yeah, man. whatever comes next, man, I'm excited for it. I hope our paths cross then. But in the meantime, man, I really appreciate you, bro. As always, great to connect with you again. It's been too long. Absolutely, bro. Thanks, man. Take care.